Uh, yeah, so this is a part of the shoulder here, the, uh, the shoulder of the beast. So I'm just going to go through it and I'm going to take out uh, some of the primal cuts and then all these other little bits is basically just going to go into meat. Uh, uh, sorry, into mince or into sausage meat. Uh, so all these like pieces around here, I'm just going to remove them. And then I'm going to cut them up a bit later on. Uh, so this piece here, this is going to go into casserole. Uh, you can't see, but I've got a big pile of um, uh, sort of pieces here that I'm going to cut into casserole. Uh, so this piece here, once I take some of the fat off and stuff, I'm going to cut this into roasts. Uh, oh well, one half of it's going to be a roast, and then I think the other half I'm probably going to put into casserole. So pretty much most things on, uh, like on the front of the animal, are either put into mince casserole and you get a uh, you get a couple of roasts off the shoulder uh, but there's nothing that you'd want to cut into uh, sort of into prime steaks or anything it mainly needs to go for uh, like for long slow cooking Uh, yeah, if anyone cares, the knife that I'm using is a more a companion. Uh, this is a real good sort of all round knife. I found it really good for boning out and stuff. And it's quite good for cutting out larger pieces as well. Uh, so all of Oh uh, yeah, so all of this here, this is up around the top of like the shoulder blade. Uh, so all of this, I'm going to cut all the fat off and stuff and I'm going to put into mince. Get your own. In her day. Alright, so what we're doing here, I'm just going to give you a run anybody who was a lot down of on a few of the, of the cuts. In hospital. Uh, so this is the... Uh, really? This is the... There was, there was one up in back half of the animal. Uh, so here to here yeah. we've got the ribeye, right the then here to here uh, you've got your porterhouse, and then around here this is all just going to turn into mince, uh, so we're going to bone that all off. <laughs> Alright, so this here is all the meat that I showed you before, we've got it all cut up now, this is all into casserole, and this is my sister Grace, you know her from such things as... <laughs> I uh, had to play a bongo. Um, so she's doing the bagging. So we just put a, a yeah, label on it and then just into a Ziploc bag. And this is how we're going to freeze them. Alright, so we're going to cut through here. We're going to, um, uh, yeah, so we're going to remove the ribs. Just the flabby piece off first. Uh, so all of that bit there that he's about to cut off, 
all of that there is just going to go into mince basically. And sausage meat. Or sausage meat. Alright, so we're just going to cut this off. Right, so when you're cutting through like this, you want to cut through with your knife as much of the meat because otherwise it just mucks up your saw. So you just want it left so you're only cutting through the bone with the saw. So here we're boning out the, um, oh, what do you call it, the ribeye? Porterhouse. Porterhouse, don't worry, it's the porterhouse. Oh uh, yeah, so this is the porterhouse that was being boned out, so I'm just going to give it a bit of a trim up. So all this kind of like the grisly stuff here, you just want to trim that off. And there's a big sort of a, um, uh, like a hard sinewy piece here, so you want to take that off. And then same on here, this is called the chain, so you want to take that off. And you just want to leave as much meat on as possible. Alright, so I'm just going to cut this up now. Uh, when you're cutting your Stacks up, you want to use a wider knife and a longer knife so you can get a bit of cut. So, I'm just gonna. Uh, so, the first one here, uh, that one's just gonna chuck into mince. You just want to get it nice and even. Just want to use a slow, like a gliding, uh, what do you call it, sort of movement. Like that. Alright, so that's your porterhouse there. Uh, so you can see all the marbling in there. So that's going to melt through when you cook it and that's going to come out really nice. Just to cut it into sizes so, so they can handle it for, for cutting up the meat on the table. It's easier to cut it hanging up. You just cut a line sort of from the tile part, go straight across here, and you should hit a joint in there. So you cut through the meat first with your knife, so you only have the bone to do with the saw. And roughly there. I'm not a perfect butcher. Ah, oh, that's good. One thing I did do, I got the joint in the right place. They're meant to be cutting it just there. So if you have had just a quarter of an inch more of a knuckle sitting there, it would have been perfect. Hey, Jim, what are you doing at the uh, moment? <laughs> I think I know what I'm doing. I'm trying to explain it. I'm following the meat around the bone to take the bone off the meat. Ah. Yep. Is that going to be roast? Uh, some of this will be roast and some of this 
off the bone is what you just cut off for mints. Cool. Or your stuff for sausage meat. Cool. That's part of what you try and take it off without taking any fingers off. <laughs> Good plan. Yes, there's nothing worse than losing an eye, is there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Just trying to break up the back leg so it's easier for the mom's cutting roast and steak and everything. So I like to just cut the. Is that just fat? This is fat and this. Oh, lovely. It's just to be able to get your finger through there and get a good grip on it. Then you cut this muscle down. You've got bones running in all different directions. A lot of fat, eh? Yeah, well, that, there's a pelvic region, there's a pelvis, the top part of the pelvis. Oh, very cool. Is there always that much fat on, or does it depend well, on the. Through that whole pelvic area, there's a part of fat. Always, yeah. Whoa. And that part out there is sort of with the whole. Um, Canal goes out to the to the great wide world. Because <laughs> that's part that's the part of the, t the last bit of the tailbone. Oh. The tail sticks up. There. Ah. Very cool. So what um does this meat get used for usually? Uh it's Probably a roast or two, uh, really good uh, not top end steak but top eating stuff because it's sort of quite tender. Is there a method to cutting this up? No. <laughs> Just kind of no, go it's, for it. It's one way to loosen it off. So when you get it finished, it's uh, this is the only advantage I have on other people. I'm ambidextrous. <laughs> cool. What does that bone get used for? Do you uh, use it for anything, or no? You just cut the last of the meat off, and uh, sort of probably throw this away. It's, so you don't use it for it's soup. It's not that much use for soup. It's not as good as some of the others. Oh yeah. But because of the different angles, you can't cut it off cl cleanly in one go. Yeah, Dad? This is just these nice soup bones. I haven't cleaned them off very well because uh, a little bit of meat on is uh, it make really nice soup. The housewife would appreciate if we cut some of the some of the fatty pieces off. <laughs> but. If you cut the bones in such a way that it opens up good so the marrow can get the flavour of the marrow, get into the soup. Oh yes. How do you know you've cut it the right way? Oh, it just opens up into the oh, yeah. marrow. Yeah, so it'll come out good there, and the same in the middle of that bone. Oh. So just cool. So is that better than just cooking, like the whole bone? You yeah. wouldn't get the flavour out. Now you've oh, got yeah. to open up into the marrow. Cool. 